the hollow. Back again with uh, the Horus of the um, it's a 2D platformer game that I've been sort of looking at for a while. She saw it at a convention. So, yeah. It's supposed to be pretty good. Uh, and you set up the audio channel. Maybe. It shows? It is. Alright. Do that. Make sure everything <clears throat> we don't need is closed. Cool. Alright. Horse. Uh, see these options? My voice is already gone. <clears throat> okay. It doesn't lock my cursor in. As long as it doesn't lock my cursor in, that is fine. Subtitles. It's probably fine. Sound levels look fine. Alright. Let's start new game. I know nothing about this other than people like it. Shit. Horus, man 2.0. Meant to be sound? If there's any sound here, I'm not getting it either. Hang on. I've not done anything weird, have I? No, it just seems like the game has decided no sound for you. It takes like any button press as a motion to pause. I hope this is just meant to be muted. Otherwise, we might need to restart. Okay. That's strange. So, wait. Up oh, this big camera. Down is crouch and look down. And so I was born. As people I remember seeing with the old man, the old lady. And their daughter, Heather. After they'd said hello, the old man powered me down so he could install some software. I could tell they were nice people. The old man didn't give me a silly voice or stupid personality. <laughs> and the old lady didn't dress me like a clown. 
Although for some reason, Heaven really didn't like me. Once it had time to get used to walking, the old man asked me to dash from one end of the room to the other. There's not meant to be voices for this, is there? There's cutscene volume, but we had a whole cutscene without any sound. Creaky. Do a bit of a slide. Next, the old man spent a couple of hours building some wooden platforms. He said he wanted me to jump on them. But I must admit, I was scared. It wasn't until I saw Heather and her mother happily climbing up them that I decided it might be okay. Your man didn't rearrange the platforms. He told me to try and reach the other end of the room without touching the floor. I said the floor's made of lava. And when I smiled at her, she just frowned. I looked away. The old lady arranged some pillows and blankets. She said it was in case I fell. But I think she just wanted it to look more like lava. When I got to the other side, the old man just smiled and said, I keep pressing A to try and skip through the text. That'll do for now. Begin, be bold, and venture to be wise. Quintus Horatius Flashes. After one, learn to walk. This is just another good scene with no audio. A couple of the, uh, okay, hang on. We're gonna pause because this seems weird. Maybe discussions. Book, please read. It just seems weird that the cutscenes have no audio. And I feel like this is probably meant to be voices. There's nothing in... I'm checking the um, Steam discussions now. I, I don't really see anything. I'll just try restarting it. Do it all for Try relaunching it, see what happens. Because it doesn't feel right. Apparently it's a glitch. I searched Google specifically for our sounding cutscenes. It came up. We're trying to we're trying a new game again. I wanna hear that cutscene sound.
See, that's so much better now. I actually hear the smoke. I wonder if it was because I changed the um, audio channels. I guess we're playing the. I guess Horus is the uh, first of the. Man 2.0. Whatever they call them. Automations. So I guess the old man is maybe Solomon. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? Answer the door. Let's try this again. I'm hoping there's voices. I'm sure the, the, the trailers have voices. And so, I was born. Hey. The All first right. people I remember seeing were the old man, the old lady, and their daughter, Heather. After they'd said hello, the old man powered me down so he could install some software. I could tell they were nice people. The old man didn't give me a silly voice, or stupid personality. And the old lady didn't dress me like a clown. Although for some reason, Heather really didn't like me. Once I'd had time to get used to walking, the old man asked me to dash from one end of the room to the other. I wonder if they did the voices all for like, extra speech. Of it's actually voice acted with the voice changer. Next, the old man spent a couple of hours building some wooden platforms. He said he wanted me to jump up them, but I must admit, I was scared. It wasn't until I saw Heather and her mother happily climbing up them that I decided it might be okay. Also, something weird. The music is on the yeah, system sound. But the game has the, the voice acting. I noticed that on some other games as well. I wonder if it's just like a weird, weird thing with certain, certain game engine. The old man then rearranged the platforms. He told me to try to reach the other end of the room without touching the floor. Heather said, the floor's made of lava. But when I smiled yeah. at her, she just frowned and looked away. The old lady arranged some pillows and blankets. She said it was in case I fell, but I think she just wanted it to look more like lava. Freak you. When I reached the other side, the old man just smiled and said, that'll do, for now. That'll do, pig. That'll do. And we're back up where we were. To my little pony. A couple of days after those first lessons, the family had a big meal. 
and I was in Old Gulg's angry. Else. He was pissed. The professor was the old man's brother. He was very quiet, and always seemed to just kind of stare at me. He had lived with the old man for five years. The house was so huge they barely saw each other. He preferred instead to stay in his room, leaving everything up to his butler, Mr. Deck. As he insisted everyone call him, although the, the professor always called him Adon. For a while, he called me the yellow bastard. Oh. But the old man made him stop, as he thought it sounded racist. Yeah. Mr. Silton was the old man's driver. Before he worked here he'd gotten in with some bad people and was the driver in a post office robbery. Although it all went wrong for some reason. Mr. Silton showed me a video of his band. I'm sure some people must like it, but I just found it terrifying. Then there was Alice. She was the cook. She was a nice old lady. When she was younger she had been a TV chef. Then, years later she had a small part in Coronation Street. All right. Mr. Silton said, <clears throat> before she worked for the old man, Alice was quite a hoarder. She kept old newspapers and bicycles. And something about a pool, in a shoebox. The next morning, the old man gathered everyone together, to show them what I was capable of. What else does he do? asked Mr. Silton. The old man smiled. He can help around the house. Could he help me with my newspaper collecting? asked Alice. I'm not sure that's a good idea, said the old lady, but he can do all sorts of jobs. Yeah, said Mr. Silton, shove a stick up his ass and he can do Dex job. <laughs> now, now, said the old man, we have company, pointing to some important looking people. I was expecting people. it to be like this. Two large men, both called Gary, set up what the old man referred to as lasers. He said again, I should try to get from one end of the room to the other, but I shouldn't be worried, as I had a special chip which meant no matter how damaged I was, I couldn't die. He said it was like infinite lies in a video game. But when he realized I didn't understand, he said he would explain another time. Okay, so he's gonna try to kill me to demonstrate I can't die. Shit. Don't get much time, man. Everybody clapped, except the important looking men. Not exactly a cold calculated killer, is it? said the man in black. What, the man what do you want? Gray laughed. What kind of artificial intelligence was that? He asked. Dodge lasers, like unless there's something in the way. I'll see you do okay, that. Okay, okay, said the old man. He turned to me and whispered, they're going to make it quite a bit tougher, but I'm sure you'll be fine. Uh. Okay. Oh, bitch. Jump up there. No. There's actually anything up there. No, see, you do have to go this way. Just have to be careful of that thing up there. Oh, okay. This is a hard platformer. It's gonna just send me back to the start every time. <gasps> okay. Just need to be fast and jump right there. It just. No. Thank you. 
Just don't be any lizards down there. Garys then rearranged right. the room one last Garys. time. The old man smiled. Now, now, there's no need to look so glum, he said. I'm still happy with everything you've done today. So this time, I was determined to do him proud. Oh, this looks easier, maybe? As long as I don't jump too high. What do I want to do here? Yeah. Some baby jumps. That was a lot easier. Man's friends actually seemed quite happy when I made it through. We might have a winner after all, said the man in black. It's no kill by 3000, but you can almost see the fire in its eyes. A couple of days later, the old lady said she had a surprise for me. My own room. She also wanted to play me some music. I wasn't sure after what Mr. Silton had shown me. As if music wasn't amazing enough, the old lady then bought me a television set. I couldn't believe what I saw. Tell her. I watched everything I could. Comedy, drama, horror, sci-fi. Anything anyone wanted to watch, I would happily watch with them. Then one day, <clears throat> the old man set up a small box. He plugged some cables into the television and said, This is what I meant when I said video games. I played games at every chance I could. I took on everyone. I was unstoppable. I had enjoyed music. Yeah, the old lady. Television. But to me, video games really were the highest art form. <laughs> Table tennis. The two. This extra start. Oh shit. This is just Pong. Kind of. Beat me, I'm a robot. Shit. Just have to get those weird angle shots on it. Why, oh, you bitch? Okay. Just hand me the win. Heather's birthday was a couple of months later. Her mum and dad had bought her a camera and arranged a day out by the sea so that Heather could take some photos. Although I really don't think she Aww. wanted any pictures of me. When the old man asked the professor if he wanted to go, he frowned and said, I can't believe you want to spend time with that thing, it could destroy the world. I wasn't sure what he meant, but the old man just smiled and said, that's what you said about the Game Boy. Anton, how about you? I don't think so, said Mr. Deck, the last time I got in that car. Barry crashed us into a branch of Woolworths. I never would have gone into Woolworths of my own accord. The All these British references. The car was old and the brakes had failed, but Mr. Deck was having none of it. So Mr. Silton drove, and Alice came along for the fresh air. 
company, I enjoyed being outside. Although, the old lady kept telling me to be careful of the rickety old walkways. It felt like she was telling me off, but I think she was just concerned. As the old man and I stood on the clifftops, I could see something in the distance. I wasn't sure what it was, so I asked the old man. He said it was a battleship that had sunk in the 1940s. But he looked so sad, when he spoke about war. I didn't see what happened. But the metal platform header was climbing on had collapsed. She was safe, even if the rocks were a lot more violent than what it looks like. The tide was rising, and we didn't know how long the Coast Guard was going to be. So I offered to climb down and get her. The old man agreed, but said I should be careful, as Heather doesn't have infinite lives, like I do. Oh no. Is this going to be where, like, bro, I friend, the jump button wouldn't work. All right. Damn it. Yo, how far did she fall? Where did she fall? Heather was unconscious, and her leg was broken. So I picked her up as gently as I could. I decided it so if I feel now, is an actual consequence? The rest of the way. If I die here, it's like, oh fuck, you fucked up servant girl, she died. No, oh, okay. There's some bullshit old man spelled. So we get back and she's dead because he got that good once. arrived by the time I had made it back to the cliff top. The medics made sure Heather was okay nah. and then took her off to hospital. A few days later, we all went to see how she was doing. She was fine, but would have to wear the cast for a couple of months. Be hers. Be Heather. It's very cute. Raw saves local girl. Mechanical man to the rescue. Hero robot, hero bot. Zooming. Once Heather got to know me, we became good friends. Yeah. We enjoyed the same films and TV. She was also annoyingly good at some of my favorite games. <laughs> After a while, she became very interested in how I worked. Soon she oh. knew as much about me as the old man did, if not more. We spent the next couple of months visiting other countries, as when it came to teaching me things, the old man always liked to pick interesting locations. Should should he be hiking he at the, the older age? Of mathematics to so me nice shades. Pyramid of Egypt. Taught me history in the dead of night, surrounded by mysterious giant stones. Uh. And even showed me science in action high up in a hot air balloon. This is why I was surprised when the old man took me to a restaurant. It was nice, but it seemed very somber compared to the previous grand locations. He said he just wanted to chat, and this was nice and quiet. 
plus it was his favorite place to eat. We talked about life, the universe, Douglas Adams, everything really. When I asked him, why were we here, why did we exist, he just smiled and said, life is like a game, just don't expect to be finished anytime soon. When I looked puzzled, he said, well, everyone should have a purpose. So I asked him, what's my purpose? No. He thought for a bit, then said, so you want to be a real boy? <laughs> Which just confused me even more. Eventually the old man said, for now, I want you to help clean things around the house. I must have looked unimpressed. As he then said, okay, I want you to clean one million things. It didn't sound like the meaning of life. But I suppose you've got to start somewhere. Is that his whole game? Cleaning a million things? A man can't have everything. Where would he put it? Parents Alan Spike Milligan. The next day, the old man said he wanted to install some more software. So he powered me down. When I came to, he said Mr. Silton had a joke for me, and that I should pull his finger. I don't think I got the joke. So the old man powered me down again. Oh. This time when I pulled Mr. Silton's finger, I got the joke. But it wasn't very funny. The old man then explained that he had installed a special chip which allowed me to clean away anything that was broken. He said it also tells me how many things are nearby and how many smaller things are in a bigger thing. It all sounded very complicated, but he said all I really had to do was pause, and it would bring up all the information I needed. He then right. said he wanted me to find and clean all of the items in the room. He told me there would be some chains to climb, but that would be nice and easy, as I just had to press up. He then finished by saying, when I had collected all the items, I should come back here. Cool. I guess it's these... oh. Interesting. I guess it's these on top right, Junk Total, Junk Here, and Junk Held. I thought we had unlimited lives, but on the bottom right it says 7 revives. Interesting. Or maybe that's like how many lives we have when we're dealing with like a sensitive situation and carrying the little girl. Oh, you have to stand on it. I think bigger trash items take a while. I like the uh, basketball stuck in the back of there. Anything further over here? I don't really see anything. Is that all the drunk? Yes. The old Fucking man then stomped the old lady Heather and I to follow him outside. I was happy too, as it was a lovely hot day. The old man said he was worried that Alice had been hoarding again, 
she had filled up a small barn with old bicycles and newspapers. Heather said, this would be a perfect chance to properly test my new powers. The old man thought for a second, then said, using the steptoe chip, I should find and clean, at least 300 yeah. things. When we explained to Alice what we wanted to do, she seemed scared. But after the old lady kindly explained that, well, the barn was starting to smell, she said it would be okay. One last thing, said the old man, if you want to use a door, just push up. When I was about to enter the old barn, Mr. Silton said he had seen some mushrooms growing inside. Oh. He asked me to give him any that I found. He then oh. winked, but I wasn't sure why. Oh. Wait, did that reduce my lives? I've got eight. Maybe it's how many times I've died, rather than how many I've got left. Okay, how do we get up here? Door? Holy shit, why do you haunt so much? Eddie! Why do you need so much shit? bad about using too many lives. It's just like a scoffing. The old man was very happy with everything that I had cleaned. But I think Mr. Silton was even more happy with his mushrooms. It wasn't the days getting shorter, or the evenings getting colder. It was the falling leaves that really made me feel sad. As we watched the trees blowing in the breeze, the old lady said, The leaves must fall before the blossom comes. She had already explained the seasons to me, so for once, I actually understood. But it didn't make me feel any better. The old lady obviously had enough of my moping, and said, Right, next week we're going to have a party. Ooh. For some reason she insisted that we were all going to wear costumes. Heather was very excited and said, I've got some perfect ideas. Isn't this horror music? <laughs> yeah, Halloween. PM till question Oh, we're a pumpkin. It was That's terrifying. Cute. Everyone was dressed like someone else. I think I was meant to be some kind of pumpkin, as everyone kept shouting, It's the great pumpkin. Still, at what? least Mr. Silton was having fun telling everyone his joke. 
And I suppose Heather's costume was quite flattering. It's cute. After what seemed like forever, everybody left, and things got back to normal. Heather was allowed to watch a scary film before she went to bed, but I had to help Alice and Mr. Deck clean up. Oh. I wasn't happy about this, but the old man said if I was quick, then I could watch the end of the film with them. I wonder what movie that is. Alice was vacuuming, and Mr. Deck was taking down the decorations. So I thought I could so the plates and glasses. That's the fire alarm going off. The ear splitting sound was the fire alarm. As usual, Mr. Deck blamed Mr. Silton, saying he was probably smoking one of his jazz cigarettes. But then the professor appeared. He said that there was something burning in the kitchen. You mean where you just were? Confused, saying that she hadn't cooked anything since the morning. We were all surprised when Mr. Deck opened the oven. Inside was a large black cloak and a slightly burnt pair of men's underwear. Oh. Suddenly the old lady burst in. She looked terrified. She kept shouting, there's someone on the roof. Oh. What's when going on? Went outside, it slowly became obvious that it was Mr. Silton. He was completely naked and playing his guitar. He shouted down, when I finish this song, uh -oh. I'm going to fly. The old lady said, oh my god, I know this one, there's only about 30 seconds left. The old man then quickly turned to me and said, you know what to do. What? What? Oh. The. By the time I had made it up to the roof, Mr. Silton was beside the edge. I tried to calm him down, but he was acting even more bizarre than usual. <laughs> Alright. Too many shrooms. Robot saves local idiot. Your robot saves again. Android and hero. After an hour or so, Mr. Silton was fine. He said he had eaten some bad magic mushrooms. Part of me wondered why he hadn't doubled in size. Still, he was soon laughing and joking with the paramedics. One of them said he looked like the world's worst clown. I don't <laughs> think Mr. Silton liked that. So he told his own joke. But that just made the other paramedic call him Marshmallow Marso. I don't think he liked that either. But at least he was still in one piece. I think that's true. A month or so later, Heather and I were playing Last video adventure. games Nine. when the old man said he wanted me to come outside. He said it had been a year since I had arrived, so he had a present for me. New shoes? Oh, plushy. He placed the teddy bear high up on a wooden platform. He then told me I should try to pick it up. Huh? My... Try as I might, I couldn't reach the. I was worried about running into the phone. However, I still don't understand what happened next.
Get a heart attack? Shut down. Pinocchio. Why did he shut down? Is it just like the trauma of seeing his creator die? Dylan Horace. Oh, are they trying because of men's? Getting them until he starts working again. It's like a unused bathroom to use in the store things. Chips. Eyes. Oh. How many flushes? going on?
Are these his dreams? Maybe? Was I dead? Was this heaven? It sort of looked like the basement bathroom. Hmm. It was the shoes the old man was going to give me. I thought I might as well put them on. They were just the right size. The old man's hat fit me pretty good as well. I'm sure he wouldn't mind if I wore it. Nothing is beautiful from every point of view. It is voracious precious. My world ripped apart. Amazingly, Ooh, the shoes the allowed fuck? me to defy gravity. Or maybe it was a hat. What? <laughs> Alright, what? That was like, out of the blue, suddenly walking on fucking walls. I thought it was just gonna be like extra jump shoes, not not walk and wall shoes. Part of the basement was flooded, and the stairs had collapsed. I didn't know what was going on, but I knew I wanted to get back upstairs. The gate was locked. I would need a key to open it. Oh. I had to be careful. The electricity was going haywire in some places. Oh, wait, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. Because gravity changes like that, so you just do that, right? I get it. My brain can handle it somewhat. So I have to remember that you can't really fall off, you have, to, you have to jump off. How long had I been asleep? Months? Years? I was so confused. Where had everybody gone? Ceiling Horus. I was slightly scared. This was the first time I had been outside on my own. Those bullet holes? Junk everywhere. I knew what I had to do. This had to be my purpose. I would clean a million things so I could become a real boy. Whatever that meant. Screaming? Are they down here? No. Let's be further left. The screaming was coming from one of the bedrooms, but the stairs were blocked by a wall of fire. to be a man, a woman, and their children. They were confused and terrified. At first the man looked like he was ready to fight me. 
but after I convinced them that I was there to help, he calmed down. There was no way I could carry them all at once, so the children went first. Seconds. Can't run while carrying. I dropped the children off at the front door and promised them that I would be back with their parents. Oh. Uh -oh. I'm off fire. Oh, what's going on here? The fire was getting much worse. So the woman went next. Oh, jump out the window, dude. I think you're only bet. front door. All the woman said was, thank you, please hurry. Oh shit. Okay, so, so the door maybe. By the time Dead. I managed to get back, the man was unconscious. I had to pick him up quickly, as I could tell the house was going to collapse at any moment. Out the window. Window. Huh? Oh. Shit, it was so slow. This guy. Oh, piss off. Where's the store go? Was that a way out? I hope so. <laughs> I mean, if it wasn't, we definitely didn't have enough time to get out with him. family set up a tent so they had somewhere to stay. The kids were excited as they got to camp outside, but I think they knew they had just lost their home. When I mentioned my quest to clean a million things, the man said I should look through the rubble of the house, as they had no use for it. So, when everyone was making dinner, I looked through the wreckage. There wasn't anything I could clean. But to my astonishment, I found a TV set and a games console. Ooh. With a bit of fiddling, I was able to get them to work. Give them the so I sat playing games with the kids until their parents said it was bedtime. As we talked, the man opened a bottle of wine. I asked what had happened, why was everything so ruined? The man looked at the woman, then the woman sighed and said, There was a war. Oh, shit. Yes. A war said the man one side of the planet attacked the win other, this war and before we knew you tell retaliation still win everything gone Just fucking run everything destroyed huh. well it's late said the woman we should really get some sleep help yourself to anything you need and we'll see you tomorrow In the morning, I asked the man if he knew what had caused the fire that had destroyed their house. The man smiled, crap old house, bad wiring, constant electrical surges from the unreliable Yeah, it line, definitely was not kid in the backgrounder. He said, if we had the money, we'd move to the mainland. 
but we can barely feed ourselves, let alone buy a new house, so for now we're left here with the rest of the scum. But he did say I should head to the mainland, as there would be plenty there for me to clean, and a better quality of rubbish. The man said, before the war, my lovely wife used to be a fisherman. Fisherwoman? Fishing person? I used to catch fish, interrupted the woman, and, seeing as you saved us all from a fiery end, maybe you would like to borrow my boat to get to the mainland. I was a little scared, but then they gave me some captain software and I was an old salty sea dog within minutes. Nice. So then we can sell from here now. Okay, cool. We'll go back and explore the um, right side. But we can head under water eventually. The gate was locked. I would need a key to open oh. it. We could have climb ladders. We're not. We're not. Uh, we're not advanced enough. Guns? Can't really get in there though. But yeah, anyway. Shit. But we weren't gonna make it. So there's more up there. Oh, shit. Okay. We can do this, but we need to be careful. Oh, we can probably do that. anything else down here. I think there was a platform that I missed. Oh, no, I didn't miss this. I did that, I did that didn't I? Wait, can we... Yeah. The gravity boots are nice. I'm also loving the um, music. I was surprised to see an old man, but not as surprised as he was. It turned out he was blind. Oh. <laughs> he was kneeling on the floor with his hand in a drain. When I asked him what he was doing, he said his cat had crawled into the pipes and he was trying to get her out. He was very happy when I offered to help. He said there was no way we could reach her from here, so if I was willing, I could make my way through the sewers and get her from the other end. He said he would turn off the water for as long as possible, but I would have to run, as the pipes would soon fill up again. I happily agreed. So he gave me a key. Okay. He said this will open all the sewer gates. Go through here, then down the ladder. And through the big door at the Ooh, bottom. We know where there's a few sewer gates, uh, it's handy. Take your rubbish. Ah. He's meant to be that famous musician who, whose name is not coming to my brain right now. I was about to say Gar Gary Glare for a second, but no, definitely not Gary Glare. I better run. Monker S, alright. I better run. <sighs> Prick, alright. Rin, Rin work. Rin can do this. God. It's 
rise and quick. Holy shit. Eh. Excuse me? Ugh. Okay, here it's not really rising, it's just... Rising and falling. I saw a ball down there. At least you have four full lives to try this. And again. Ah, oh, you son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Come on. Okay, we've got all the rubbish there. Trying to be quick. It'd be cool watching a hundred percent speed run of this. See how trash I am. All right. Ooh. Wait, how are you meant to get up there? Never mind. I'm trying to look rubbish. You just have to sacrifice yourself to get that. I can go back in. To get the rubbish I missed. I'm trying to use the fucking door. I found the old man's cat. Definitely can't go all that she drunk. Was fine, if a little confused. I was horrified. The fuck? It looked like me. That it shambled around like something from Are the you? film we watched on Halloween. You can't touch them all. It just brings us back down there. was happy to have his cat back. He looked so content with her sat on his lap. I told him about the thing I saw, but he just laughed and said, those bastard robots, they're always getting up through the pipes. Don't worry though, it'll never get through the big doors. I bet, to the point where I can become way, waterproof. We'd blow up can... a lot of them when we had the chance. Oh. I wasn't sure what he meant. But I decided now wouldn't be the best time to tell him I was a robot. The man laughed. And said, don't worry, I know who you are. And told me that he knew the old man. Oh. As we chatted, the man brewed himself some tea. He said that he had worked for the old man. In fact, he had lost his sight in one of the old man's factories. Strangely, he smiled at this thought. He always did me right, he said. When I had my accident, the old man said he would look after me. And he did. He always made sure I had enough money, and he let me move into this old pumping station on his land. Which reminds me, I have something here for you. He rummaged around behind a cupboard. Then he continued saying, the old man wanted you to have this when you were old enough, but fate wouldn't allow it. He passed me a large box. It was empty. Oh. I thought about pretending to be excited, but the man said, wait a minute, it's empty isn't it? He slumped back in his chair. 
I was robbed a few months ago. He said, almost in a whisper. I said. It's strange. They took practically anything metal, but left loads of food and a brand new saxophone. The man looked sad, so I thought I would try to change the subject. I told him about my quest, to clean a million things. This at least made him smile. He said I was welcome to go back through the pipes anytime I wanted, as there right. were loads of old things in there that could be cleaned away. Yeah, so I think I need to come back here at some point. run into the ocean like that. Okay, is this... where, where does this go? We can get in here? Yeah. Weird robot zombies. What the hell? Brownies Association. The gate was locked. I would need a key to open it. How much do we get? Dunk. Oh, let me do that. Bruh. Let me pass. So I'll probably come back here once we have a key for the National Brownie Association door. I was going to say there can't be much more junk here, but I bet it's all underground or something. Uh, underwater. There was a gate through here. Whoa, what am I doing? It was a oh uh, shit. This one. What's this? I guess I can't interact with it yet. Maybe this is another place where I have to come back to it. I don't think I can just drop down. Excuse me? I've got a key, I've just used it. <laughs> okay, so this is a quick way back into there. Where, where, where does this right side go? 
anywhere? I would have to come back here. I think I might have to come back here to raise the skit. Uh, do anything with this? No? Electrical death. Get back quicker. Okay, I think all that's left then is to head left. Go to the mainland. No. I took the fisherman's boat to the mainland. The fisherman was right. Everything was in pieces. Everything had been destroyed. I docked the boat in some ruins. They must have once been a town. This is pretty grim. Oh, a lot of rubbish, but I can't really... can't really do much about it. even put all the junk. It's like Mary Poppins. Oh. Yep. was confronted by a lovable fat oh. old dog. He almost looked pleased to see me. Suddenly, three men appeared holding large guns. Or at least two men and what looked to be a pregnant woman. Incredibly, it was Mr. Silton. Oh. I thought you'd been shut down, he said. I mean, it's been years. I'm not really sure what happened, I replied. I then told him about me cleaning a million things. He laughed and said, nothing changes. He then showed me into what was surprisingly a really nice house. Mm. Please excuse my husband, said the pregnant lady. Okay, she so went inside Nina, the family. But everyone calls me Eddie. Can I believe you know this idiot. And that's Preston. We've met. Said the small man, it was me that delivered that thing, remember? All you used to deliver was weed, mumbled Mr. Silton as he put the dog dish on the floor. And, I was there that night, when this twat was off his face on mushrooms. Yeah. Thanks for letting me and the dog stay, by the way. Yeah, well, we like the dog, said Mrs. Silton. And I suppose I've got you to thank for us meeting. What with you giving Barry those dodgy magic mushrooms? She pulled out an old photograph. It was one that Heather had taken the night I had saved Mr. Silton. That's cute. Ah, oh, She was the paramedic. That's cool. It reminded me of everyone else, so I asked what had happened to them. <gasps> Mr. Silton said Alice had a small place in the countryside. 
the professor had holed up in one of the old man's factories. Mr. Deck was, believe it or not, now a presenter on the only state television channel. And Heather and her mother lived on a government compound where they both worked. I asked about the old man, surprised that Mr. Silton hadn't mentioned him. How does he? He's, is our person, no? He's dead, said Mr. Silton. Sorry, I thought you knew. Anyway, said Mr. Preston, I thought you said that robot thing found the mushrooms for you, in oh. that order's manky old barn. Mr. Silton looked embarrassed. Well, said Mrs. Silton, I guess we've got you to thank for getting us together then. <laughs> Time for bed I think, said Mr. Silton, make yourself comfy, and we'll see you in the morning. Oh shit, I can move. Alright. Oh, it's inverted. Is he flying in? <sighs> yeah, this is a fucking snowman song, isn't it? I don't remember what it's called, but I know it. Can't catch up to him. No. No. Wait for me. Home is where the heart is. Pliny the Elder. Chapter 4. Finding a way home. We know how to get home. Let's take the boat. The next day, I thought it might be a good time to ask about the war. Judging by the look on everyone's faces, it wasn't. Oh. <laughs> well, the war, said Mr. Silton. Barry interrupted his wife. Can I see you for a minute? And dragged Mr. Silton out. It's going to be a robot war, isn't Leaving it? me with Mr. Preston. <laughs> Fuck. All of a sudden, Mr. Silton appeared. How about a tune up, he said. Mrs. Silton started to make some food, and Mr. Preston was playing with the dog. Leaving me to chat with Mr. Silton, I said that I really wanted to see everyone else, but Mr. Silton said that it wouldn't be that easy. Traveling now, especially for a robot, is complicated. Go back to the house, you could even do some cleaning. Wait there and I'll work out a way to get you to each of them. I told him that I couldn't get into the main house because the hallway ceiling had collapsed. I have just the thing, said Mr. Silton, as he pulled some sort of card out of his pocket. If you can get into the caves under the church next door to the house, you can use this security pass to get into the old man's laboratories. You can get into the main house that way. I was so excited. Uh, what the Brownie Association thing is. I would be able to get back into my old room, I said thanks, and made my way to the front door. Also, I think you might be able to help us out, said Mr. Silton, but we'll meet up back at the old man's house in a couple of days. You head there and we'll see you soon. Okay. I kind of want to check out more to the um, west first before we head back. Come. Ew. Oh, you bitch. It's pretty unforgiving checkpoint wise. I wasn't sure what to do with this machine. Okay, this is where we need to help us. I wasn't sure how to get inside. I wasn't sure what to do with this machine. Take passport or something.
I like the touch of the the tie is always like moving with gravity. That's nice. I took the fisherman's boat to the old lands estate. I also like how he holds onto the hat as he runs. It's cute. I think it was this. This this is the church, I think. As I walked through the old church ruins, I was surprised to hear Mr. Silton calling me. He said he had forgotten to give me something, and the church's community hall would be the perfect place to try it out. As Ask soon as we walked into the hall, Mr. Silton said he Oh, this guy stole me. the gloves. It was a pair of Atlas gloves. They made me think of the old blind man with the cat, and his stolen Atlas gloves. Mr. Silton! I wonder if Mr. Silton knew how lucky he was to still have them with a glove thief around. Mr. Silton asked me to try the gloves on and start chucking things around. But not him. He was very clear about that. <laughs> Mr. Silton suggested we clean the hall. Of course I knew when he said we, he meant me. But I was happy to try out my new gloves. He said I should clear everything off of the basketball court and put the things on the floor either side. I fiddled with the settings for a bit, but when Mr. Silton saw I was having trouble, he produced a small manual. He explained that pressing down and X would pick a thing up. X would then throw the thing, and if I wanted to place it on the floor, I should again press down and X. Okay. He looked more and more confused as he read all this. But eventually he finished by saying, well, I hope that made more sense to you than it did to me. Okay, so some things take a while. Is this, is this his friend I was with him or is that someone else? Fucking kidding me. Can I jump alright with this? Can. I could just do that instead of trying to jump. Uh, trying to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the baby. That's it. That's it. Let's see what else okay. these gloves can do, said Mr. Silton as he flicked through the manual. He actually looked quite excited when he explained that holding X 
while walking into or under a falling thing would allow me to catch it. Okay. I must admit, I was then really happy when he suggested we make it a game and I try to catch 10 basketballs. Bastard. <sighs> Next, Mr. Siltron suggested we make it a real game and see how quickly I could score 10 baskets. I enjoyed this so much. It felt just like the good old days. <laughs> Except Mr. Siltron wasn't as forgiving as the old man. Oh. Can be a bit awkward. Oh my god. Did you really have to make this 10 baskets? You can't run when you're carrying it because you just send a throw on it. Yeah, from here? When I'd scored 10 baskets, Mr. Silton gave me what he called a high five. He said I now knew everything about the gloves and I should be able to continue through the basement of the church into the house. When I asked him if he was coming with me, he I just like this guy in the right. said they would catch up with me in the main hall. He's sus. Yeah, well, what was that noise? What's all this? Is it just gonk? Can't get in here. Oh, I was meant to go into the stall there, I guess. I was stood in a gigantic cavern. When I looked down, I was horrified to see hundreds of corpses of those things. As horrible as it sounds. My stepto chip said there were things to clean. Mm. So clean them I would. Clean the corpses. I'm not quite sure how I'm meant to. Uh... <laughs> not sure how I'm meant to clean all of these very well. I can barely touch this one. 
few more jumps. There we are. Yeah, like I can't like clean these unless I go. Yeah, I need to be waterproof. Oh, we need to load the water level. Be the door Mr. Silton talked about. Huh. Oh, wait, I can do this. It's it's hard to think about the perspective sometimes. The door was exactly as Mr. Silton had described it. I just hoped that the card he had given me was the security key and not just some backstage pass. Well, it opened the door. But soon an alarm went off. Oh. Something caught my eye. It's a small yellow sphere. The book next to it explained that it was a shield that would automatically take a hit for me when activated. The Y button took the shield in and out of storage, meaning yeah. I could save it for when the going got tough. It seemed that I started with two slots to carry shields, but I could upgrade to be able to carry more. If both I and the shield died in the same room, the Lazarus chip would bring us both back. It's almost as if the shield needed its sacrifice to mean something. It felt like a true friend. Proving that even the simplest of faces can bring out an emotional reaction. Okay, that's cute. I'm trying to like throw this on there, but it doesn't doesn't really work. It's not junk, is it either? Just a can you can throw. Strange. One electrified wind alarm sounds. Wait, 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 oh fuck. Oh fuck. Oh fuck. Bro, what am I doing? This just disappears and comes back on the timer. Maybe? Yeah. Is there anything on the other side? Oh no 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 no! Wait back. Hurry up, come on. Okay. Now we're in here. Is that junk? Something literally caught my eye. 
Oh, I remember the old man had installed some software that helped show me things that were interactive, and how to interact with them. Okay. This must be what he was talking about. The electron gun blew the power. I needed to turn it back on, before I could fire again. All this crap on the uh, shelves. Uh oh, boss fight. What? 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 If there's ever a time to use these lives, I guess it's uh yeah. That was a really easy boss fight. <laughs> this seemed quite valuable. Russ is a monster. The video recorder's blinking light caught my eye. It must have been years since I had seen a film. Boss bastards. Show. Two. Maybe I could take a little break from my quest and watch the film on the tape. As the video started, I was surprised to see the old man. Hello, hello, he bellowed in his familiar tone. This is test number, um, 107C. He continued as he read from a clipboard. This unit still has three major issues. One. The shell is so incredibly thick that the whole machine is still far too large and heavy. <laughs> 2. The missile system is too unpredictable and aggressive. And 3. The trade-off between power and intelligence is far too great. I think the Thank military you, capabilities would be far too dangerous in the wrong hands. I think we would be best to push forward with the Innocence Project. I didn't really understand a word of what he said, and I was slightly disappointed that he had recorded over the film, but it was nice to see the old man's face again. Yeah, I think I was more interested in seeing Ghostbusters too. I wasn't sure oh, what was going what? on, but suddenly, inanimate objects started to come to life. That's a doll. Bitch. Fucking lightning, dude. Electricity, not lightning. Wee. Time is so short on this, it's ridiculous. Like meant to be the uh, evil dead moves. Oh, shit. Should use my lives a bit more. This rock just keeps respawning. Okay. 
Oh, I could use those guys to get through shit like that. It's interesting. I wonder if things respawn. Oh. These guys do respawn. Ah, oh, but they don't really drop any more trash. Oh, they drop a bit more trash. Can I jump on top of this? Oh, I can. Okay. Bruh, I'm okay. Camera went crazy. Uh, hi, uh, Sal Salomon Salomonella. Um, Horus is fun. Uh, it's it's difficult, but it's fun. I like um. I quite, quite enjoy the jokes. Come on. I've noticed there's quite a few um, British jokes. Uh, wait, did I get a checkpoint? I think the hardest part is just like wrapping your head, wrapping your head around the, uh, the gravity mechanics. Oh, <laughs> I should try picking that up. I think I've heard of some streamers enjoying it. I think it's just a bit of an older game right now, isn't it? It's been on for like a few years. a bit weird. Yeah. Two lives. I think they are, but I'm also like the kind of person that usually doesn't play hard games. Because I can find them too frustrating. <laughs> um, unless it's like a Souls game. Like I'm not, I'm not normally into like hard platformers. Like I definitely, definitely wouldn't play, say, Jump King. I think I would just like find that more painful than anything.
Yeah, thanks. Uh, oh shit. Okay, I see. I think I think this even though it's a hard game, I think it's pretty um forgiven, fortunately. With these like um extra life heads and such. Where am I heading? So it's nice when that on some of these um, longer levels, you've got a. Oh yeah, crappy, it doesn't really change for those. It's nice that in some of these uh, longer levels, you've got checkpoints like halfway through them and such. This is awkward. <laughs> Take back, I take back it being forgiven. Cause now I just, I, d I don't want to take my time. I'm going through this shit again. I wanna, oh, give me extra life, dying so many times. Okay, maybe it is forgiven. Use up both my lives. From the uh, air conditioning unit. Oh, piss off. Nope. Oh. Okay. Okay. Off, off, off. Made it. It wasn't like anything underneath here, was it?
knives. No! Okay, I got all the rubbish. I got all the, I got all the junk. Sixty thousand junk. The fuck? Batteries come in all shapes and sizes. I can't, I can't throw this. What am I meant to do with this? Can't drop it. So I think I just need to run with it. Oh, I see it because it's because it's went down, it would give me a bigger jump. Right. to one damaged. Oh. It's a <laughs> that's a lot of them. DCR made me wonder if there were any more recordings of the old man. I rummaged behind the TV, and was not surprised to find two more dusty old tapes. One just had hours of some strange sport. Uh. But the other had a recording of the old man. Hello, hello, came his voice again, right, this is urgent. Cancel the nanobot program immediately, all production to be stopped. Contain the remaining units in these corrosion-proof canisters. Oh, we've seen those. 
A very corrosion proof. I'm sure it's obvious, the old man continued. We have discovered that they are essentially unstoppable and can form a controlling intelligence around any object. Ghostbusters reference. Need I say more? Well, at least that explained why everything moved with minds of their own. I'd never been in this part of the house before, but I figured I would get back to more familiar surroundings once I made it through these laboratories. Yeah. Yeah, the references are cool. Do this to collect all these. Oh, what? Stay on like an angle. Is that less risk? No. So, shots me off here. Okay. Actually, got it all. Oh. Mm. No, fuck off. Very right, busting the heads out. I can do this. No, you're not. Oh, okay. I might be able to sacrifice a, a, a head to run up the wall with uh, the invincibility frames, but I guess not. Nice. If a uh, exe nanobots activated, snake dot exe. Oh. Intruder alert. Destroyed the humanoid snake message. 004-38-79. Holy uh... music. Holy shit. What's going on here? What do I need to do? Do I need to jump on it? Uh, oh yeah, I do. Jump on it and avoid the flames, which I'm doing a very bad job of. Okay. One part of the Boston. Which? Nope. Nope. It was like no good person. Jump there. And catch up to it. 
We can't the giant plums in the way. Oh, we can jump over it. Okay. I did a strip run on it. So you kill one and you get a little fireball fizz. And then they all come back and get burned. You kill another one. Bitch. I'm glad the bosses have so many checkpoints. Oh, come on. I'm not sure where the best place to stand is. I'm not sure. I'm, 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 maybe I can't do this. Isaac training, coming in handy. Oh my god, no, no, no. You monster. Okay. <sighs> Boom. How to get under there? That was just bad. I thought I totally hit that, but alright. Just jump over it. Just quite a bit to uh, pay attention to. I needed to get back on the moving lift. Oh, shit. Oh, there's all my extra lives gone. Lift two goes. Ooh, destroyed the cells. Wouldn't have thought of that actually. The door 
was nailed shut, and my fingers were too large to get a decent grip on the planks. I needed something like a troll bar. Shit. Piss off. <laughs> Somebody don't want to go through there. Let's just go down here. Let's see what's down here. Okay, it just takes you back home. Exactly where I want to be. Go back up, please. You. Okay, almost. You son of a bitch. Okay, it's fine. Quick teleport. Up. Oh, you have to land on the elevator too. I guess it's pointless being on this side, so I need I need to wait for it to pass over then. I need to move around like this. Uh, no, you twat, no. You have to be so quick there to fucking get around it in time. Ridiculous. My shoes struggled to grip the slippery wall. I'd need to keep jumping to climb it. Oh. What's going on with these shoes and why did it hurt so much? Uh, 
Those are some big boots, what the hell? Oh, I don't even sound like a little An hour. No, chuckled Mr. Silton. It's alright, we'll claim it on the insurance as accidental damage. Give mm. me a new TV as well. I explained to them that I had found some of the old man's home videos, and the contents had shocked me. The dirty old bugger, interrupted Mr. Sitton. But I didn't know what he meant. So I continued explaining about the nanobots, and Mr. Silton said we needed to get our sharpest minds on the case. Not you dipshit, he barked at Mr. Preston, we need to rescue Heather and her mum. I wasn't sure what Mr. Silton meant by rescue, but I thought I would leave them to clear up. The weather felt cold and ominous as we made our way back outside. Before we meet the others, I need you to help me get my stolen van back, explained Mr. Silton. It's going to be dangerous, and we need someone expend, uh, dependable. The equipment was heavy, but I was happy to help pack the large boxes until Preston returned with what Mr. Silton called, the mean machine. Uh, huh. No fucking... All we are is dust and shadow. Have to fight Mr. Stilton's fun. After this, after we get to gameplay, I'm gonna end the stream. To, uh, Mr. To bed. seemed even more anxious than usual. At first, I thought he just needed to use a toilet, but Mr. Stilton explained that their old gang members lived around here. Somehow, the money went missing when we robbed that post office. He continued. For some reason, they thought we'd taken it, but. As he put it, why would we live in such a dump if we had a load of money? Although this clarified things for me, it certainly didn't calm Mr. Preston, who suggested we gotta move on. Don't worry, we'll be a matter of minutes, we just need to send Mr. Chips up there to have a look, said Mr. Silton as he pointed to a window high up the building. Go on, he said with a smile, off you go then. I need to end the stream here. So, quick the titles. Thanks for watching, everyone who watched. Um, I'll definitely finish this in my next couple of streams. Uh, thanks for following, uh, Salamonella. I hope I'm saying that right. Yeah, thanks for watching, it's great. It's a really fun game. I feel like we're probably like halfway through it already. Unless it's just like a shit ton of chapters. Um, probably won't go for all the trash. I mean, I've already missed a bunch, so. But, yeah, it's fun. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Good night.